Okay, so let's talk about the standard algorithm. We've practiced this as we've gone. Um, I feel as if it's something you can handle, but I want to give you a video on strictly how to solve multiplication of decimals using the standard algorithm. Um, you can use this strategy to check your work, but I ask that you learn and understand one other strategy besides the standard algorithm so that you can um, be successful in identifying how to solve multiplication of decimals with models. Now, we're gonna multiply these numbers and I have added this in your notes onto the Google Classroom. You can also do this on a piece of scratch paper. Um, I would love for you to upload a copy of this onto that assignment so that I can see that you've done it. Also, as a bonus to make sure you're watching my videos, when you watch this, I would love for you to email me the name of your favorite restaurant. Okay, so the problem we're going to use is 4 and 12 hundredths times 15. So we're going to set up the problem with the ghost decimals, pretending like it is 412 times 15, but then we're going to add that decimal back in. So I'm going to pretend like the decimal is not even there. So I have my number, and I'm pretending like it says 412 but I'm gonna write that decimal in there so that I don't forget it. And I'm multiplying that times 15. Okay, so my second step, it says multiply the number like you would whole numbers. So let's multiply it out. I'm gonna start in my ones place because I always start in my ones place and I'm gonna multiply straight up five times two, I get 10. So I'm gonna write my zero, carry my one. Five times one is five plus one is six. 5 times 4 is 20. Now, because I don't have another number over here, I'm going to just drop my 2 down into my partial product. So I am done with my 1's place, so I can X that out, X out what I carried. And then I need to write my 0. Don't forget it. Super important. Most common missed problem when multiplying large numbers is forgetting to write that placeholder 0. Because the next place, I'm not just multiplying times one, I'm multiplying it times 10. I'm just writing my zero down here so that I don't have to worry about it again. All right, so now I can just multiply. One times two, I have two. If I had done 10 times two, I would have 20. So there's my 20. One times one, I'm gonna have one. One times four, I'm gonna write my four. Okay, so I'm completely done. I don't have anything else up here. I've multiplied my bottom numbers times all my top numbers. So now I can just add up my partial products. Zero plus zero is zero. Six plus two is eight. Zero plus one is one. Two plus four is six. Okay, so 6,180 is my partial product, or my product for this. However, I'm not done because now I need to count the number of decimal place value positions in the factors and move my decimal in my product that many places. So like we've been practicing uh, on the prior activities, I need to count my top decimals and my bottom decimals and add them up to the side. Now there's two different ways you can do that. You can just straight count them or you can circle them so that you make sure you are identifying them. So I have one decimal in the top, two decimals in the top. So two in my top row. I have zero in my bottom row. So two plus zero is two. So I'm gonna take that imaginary decimal that's behind every whole number, and I'm gonna count the spaces between the numbers and move it over two times. So one, two. So I'm gonna move my decimal right there. So my product of 4 and 12 tenths times 15 is 61 and 80 hundredths or 61 and 8 tenths. So I have six practice problems down here that I would love for you to try on your own and send me a picture of how you solve those on your either, either on this printed out paper or on scratch paper. Don't forget to email me the name of your favorite restaurant for bonus points.